today with us we have Not So Average Fangirl, also known as Elijah. And for a lot of you who don't know, she does music. I do! I know, <laughs> a lot of people don't know this. Yes, so uh, online I do go by Not So Average Fangirl. Uh, my real name is Elijah, and just like Kay said, I do produce music and stuff as well. Um, I've only released a couple songs, I've got two new ones coming up, but for the most part I just like run this YouTube channel where I do uh, mainly reactions to shows, um, some gaming now, and some here and there I'll throw in a little like snack review. <laughs> Tell us about your choice for how you brand yourself and your music. So like... For the, yeah, because it's like my music, I try to be a little more professional, like a little more traditionally professional. Um, just like, I don't know what I was kind of taught to growing up in the industry, um, you know, what professionalism is. Um, but I like to have a little bit more fun on my channel. So like on my channel, I have more freedom where I, I'm just myself, you know, it's colors, it's gay, it's silly, I, you know, I curse like a sailor, um, it's just a good time. Uh, when it comes to the music though, I do try to like tone it down a little bit. I do still want to shout out the pride in, in everything, um, but I'm just not as, as, how do I say it? I'm not as animated towards the music as I am on my channel. So for the music, I just try to a little bit more of a calm professional approach but um definitely the same in aspects like my music is also super gay so i always <laughs> definitely try to put the push that out there like hey i'm not singing about dudes i'm singing about chicks come listen it's cool <laughs> um yeah pretty much all right so sticking on the music topic what is your extent of music knowledge like can you read music or do you know any instruments this is actually a very great question. Um, I can't read music for shit. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, wait, can I swear? That's bad word number 11. Oh, you're good. That's you're fine, good. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I actually played percussion in school when I was in middle school and a little bit of high school. Um, I was actually uh, the, a percussionist. I played snare drum mostly. Sometimes I played timpani, cymbals, stuff like that. Um, so I learned to read a little bit of music whenever I had to play timpanis. Um, but for the most part, I never learned scales or notes, none of, and I sing and stuff, and I'll hang out with like other singers, and they're like, oh, let's sing this on a G sharp, or, you know, a C flat, or they're saying letters and words, and I'm like, I don't know what that means, um, but cool, and, you know, they'll give me sheet music to read, and I'm like, I can't read this, I'm sorry, like, I don't know how I'm supposed to, and they're like, oh, but you're a singer, I'm like, yeah, but I don't know how to read the language i'm sorry <laughs> i'm like the least professional singer out there i swear because i don't i don't know a lick of any of that i, I don't know harmonizing um thank god the the guy i actually re record with he's so good at harmonizing so he'll show me what notes to sing like play it for me and then i'm good at mimicking so i could just mimic what i just heard um but yeah my knowledge on actual music reading is non-existent which i should probably fix that what would you say um got you into just music in general uh well originally i was actually way more into the acting so i actually i i live in florida now but i lived in california for 15 years and we moved out there because i wanted to pursue an acting career um and it was actually pretty good i i got my first job at 13 which is really cool um i worked a decent amount until i was about 15 but then i got to this weird age where i was too old to play younger roles but i was still too young to play older roles so it kind of went flat for work for me so i kind of just focused on school then and then after i graduated high school um I met with this guy who was into the music just coincidentally at a party and I was like, well, you know, I like to sing. Maybe I'll give singing a shot. So um, that's kind of where I got introduced to the music world. Um, my experience with it actually didn't gradually didn't go very well. There was like, you know, uh, sorry for the words, but like shit on top of shit on top of shit that ended up happening. And I, I did it for about like three, four years of really pursuing it, working with other people. And you learn quickly how shady the industry can be, just honestly speaking. So I, I got really discouraged. There was a lot of other music that had gotten recorded and stuff that nobody will ever hear that doesn't exist anymore. Um, well, I guess they still exist, but I, I can't release them. Like it's stuff that nobody will ever get to hear. And it was all this stuff I spent working on and it kind of turned out for nothing. So that's kind of how I got into it. But after the whole negative experiences um, and moving out here and stuff, I just decided to kind of just, you know what, screw it, I'm gonna do it myself. 
And that was probably the best choice and the best option, to be honest. So for anybody out there trying to get into the music, like, I think one of the benefits of social media today is you can get your stuff out there by yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or working with people you, you thoroughly trust. Um, and so that's always my advice because you have to be careful. You have to be careful in the industry. There's so many people who just want to take advantage of you or scam you or just just aren't decent people. So mm. that was my experience with it. Um, I'm kind of glad I walked away from that and I'm just kind of doing things on my own now. And I, I the guy who produces my tracks now and, and helps me record, he's actually a really good friend of mine and I trust him. So it's that's been really good. It's been a blessing on that side for sure. All right. So here's a fun question. What is the Ooh. process of production for your songs? Like from the idea and concept to writing to actually producing and singing it? And what would be like your team who does what? Um, this is great because again, I'm like the least professional singer out there, I swear. <laughs> like that sounded so nice and professional. And like I don't have a process. <laughs> I'm so serious. Like, these songs just, like, I'll get bored. And I'm like, you know what? I feel like writing something. <laughs> so, so, well, when I was younger, I was really into poetry. And I still kind of am into poetry. So I, I started taking my poetry. I'm like, what if I put this to melodies, you know? And so I kind of do that now. I, I literally will only write a song if I just, like, randomly feel like it. Maybe that's the ADHD. I don't know. But I'm like... Eh, I haven't released music in a while. Let's write another song. So then I'll get some kind of idea. I'll think back on something that was really emotional in my life journey. And I'm like, okay, let's write about that. So then um, maybe I'll sometimes I'll go online and, and, you know, get inspired by like tunes or notes and stuff. And then, you know, create a, a melody. And then I'll take that and then I'll write lyrics to that and then just kind of build the song from there. Um, and, and then I'll, you know, call my buddy who now does my channel. Like, hey, I got a new song idea. You want to record it? And he's, he'll be like, yeah, cool. So I, I kind of did that this last time. I have these two new songs coming out that one of them I actually had already previously written. But the producer I had worked with who created the, the original track, um, I had a falling out with him. So I took my lyrics because I wrote the whole song. And I was like, you know what? maybe we'll bring this one out so i wrote to my buddy i'm like let's make a new track for this so my new friend he's he produced the the new track for it so that's really cool and then the other song i have coming out i actually licensed the track off of this site called um beat stars i believe and it's a it's a great website it's a it's a place where you can you know pay to license these tracks for a certain amount and they they come with their own contracts that if, if you read it through if it's something you agree with um then you have a track you can work with and so i took that track just because i liked the way it sounded and i wrote a melody to it and then put lyrics to it and yeah and as for like the team it's me and my buddy <laughs> 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 I don't, I just, I don't know. I don't have like, I don't have like this professional team. I wish I did. I probably would be so much better off if I found other people to help me. <laughs> but no, so far it's me and my buddy and he's great at what he does though. Like he's so, he has such an ear for harmonies and melodies and notes and um, he's really creative. He's actually the one that also did the track for Naughty. Um, he's really good at what he does. He's great to work with and I'm comfortable with him. And so it's always just a fun time, but it's it's literally just like, I just feel like <laughs> writing a song. Let's, let's do it. <laughs> I wish I had something more professional. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So you mentioned that you had a couple new songs coming out. Uh, is there yeah. anything you can tell us about those? Sure. Yeah. Um, so the first one I'm going to release is called 143. Um, mm -hmm. And for those who don't know what 143 stands for, it stands for I love you. Um, this one is kind of like poppy and uh, it's a lot of fun. I actually previewed some of it on my um, one of my live streams. Um, it's very catchy. I can, actually, <laughs> I can preview it here if you guys want, actually, because I do have. So this is the rough first mix. It actually I have some notes to send to my buddy and he's going to fix some things. Um, but... I will share for the viewers here, you know, a little snippet. <laughs> Three more kiss just to be sure now. Four more days spent next to me. Three 
won't dance His hips are mine, girl One, four, three One, four, three It don't matter if it's midnight, baby It don't matter if it's day So that's a little snippet. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. It's very catchy. I wanted to make it super catchy because I felt like for that kind of track, you kind of have to find a really catchy hook that sticks. So that one's like very energy, high, catchy, poppy. And then the other song is called Sugar and Spice. Ooh. And this one is also pop, but it has kind of like a 90s feel to it. It's a little more throwbacky in the track. And it's a little darker because the storyline is basically about um, like sirens and basically these beautiful sirens who are going out on the prowl at night to hunt men. Sorry, T. Um, and <laughs> just, just murder them. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that one's like a little more mystical, a little throwbacky. It's a little kind of like noir almost. Not maybe not noir, but it's got its it's got its vibe. And so yeah, so they're they're different, but they're definitely both really fun. Yeah. That, that one sounds a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be great. Actually, I, mm, I don't have a mix for that one, and I can't play the original. So you know what? We'll have to wait. We'll we'll share the mix <laughs> later because he, he hasn't sent me the mix for that one yet. <laughs> All right. So going off of that, so far you said you haven't released too many songs, but you do still have quite a couple. So what yes. would you say is your favorite song to work on? Probably Naughty. Um, Naughty because. Naughty is like my baby. So uh, Naughty was the first song that I, well, I had, I fully wrote my other ones and, and stuff. And well, the, the You Should Have Known song was co-written, but um, a lot of the other songs I had worked with that didn't get to be released, um, I wrote them fully, but you know, I didn't, I always worked with somebody who then did the track and everything. Naughty was the first song that I kind of created and pushed by myself and what i mean by that is i wrote the song um because i just was really determined to make a fun christmas song that also had queer representation because i felt like as the community um we didn't we don't really have christmas songs like everybody else does that we can relate to and stuff so that was always my my dream for that and so i saw the phrase let's just be naughty and save santa the trip i think like on a cup somewhere years ago and that's where the idea sparked. And I said, man, wouldn't it be cool if there was a song kind of like about that, like a fun Christmas song that's not traditional, but you know, maybe like spins Christmas on its head a little bit. So I wrote the song and I found a track that um, I kind of wrote the melody to, but I actually didn't use that track. I then took that song to my friend who I hadn't talked to in years. I was like, hey buddy, like, do you make tracks from scratch? If so, like, can I get you to, to make this track for me to this song? And he loved it. He took on the project and he made it like such an amazing track. And so uh, we recorded it and it was the first song I, you know, uh, shared and, and had produced, you know, by myself. And then when it came time for the music video, it was the first video that I fully, you know, handled by myself like i hired everybody i set the location um I, I found all the locations i um directed i wrote i wrote the screenplay for it. like it was it is my baby so i think naughty will definitely always have a special place in my heart just because it was the first project i got to fully do on my own and i'm so proud of it because it came out so good like everybody that was involved did an amazing job we all flowed we had such a good time on set that day i mean to be fair most of them were my friends like for those who don't know just a little behind the scenes so the director the uh, director's assistant and then the two elves are actually my neighbors they live across the, the hall from me um and then the my co-star uh she is a friend of mine who works also where i live and she lives in the other building uh the security guard is my friend and he he lives in the neighboring building um and then the hairstylists on set was was my mom and then my other friend 
and then my other friend who did the hair uh her uh, partner also helped with some of the lighting and behind the set stuff. The only person I didn't personally know involved in the video was Santa. I had to, I hired him off of like some acting group on Facebook. Um, but other than that, I personally personally knew everyone, even the makeup artist and well, I, we, I met her there, but then we became friends and, and the lighting guy, like it was just such a good time and um, I would do it all over again. <laughs> Well, all right, this is kind of a difficult question. Um, what Ooh, is your favorite musical artist? Oh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. man. <laughs> Ooh, that's hard because I listen to so much different stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't, right? Um, I can maybe give you like a top because when it comes to artists and what they do and kind of what I would aspire to be, I would say Haley Kiyoko. Um, just because not only are all her songs like such a bop and a jam, but I really like her directing style. Like I know she's directed, you know, most of her videos and I really like the stories that she always puts in her songs and in the videos. And now she's got like a book coming out based off of the uh, Girls Like Girls song. Um, not to mention, you know, she's a lesbian artist who's, you know, very successful. So that, that's inspiring in itself. But um, I, I think I'm, I more admire her storytelling. I'm a huge storytelling kind of person. I love a good story. I love when music videos can depict a good story. Um, I actually like have this thing that irks me when the music video has nothing to do with the lyrics of the song. That always <laughs> frustrates me. Cause I'm like, when I fall in love with a song and there's a video, I'm like, ah, oh, I want to see that song, that story come to life. And then the video will have nothing to do with the song. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, like, it'll just be random clips that don't make sense. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Where's my story? <laughs> um, so I would definitely pick Hailey Kiyoko, but like, I like songs also by, oh man, it's so hard. I'm, I'm really jamming to this song by, oh, I forget her name. Shame on me. Um, Mitski. Excuse me. Um, Mostly because I, I originally heard this song from, uh, on Emily Dickinson, the show, and I fell in love with it. Um, and yeah, there's just too many. There's so many different artists here. So you know what? We'll just go with Haley Kiyoko as a really good... Oh, Tori Kelly. Oh, Tori Kelly's so good. Tori Kelly's on that list too. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, Bad Bunny's fun. He's he's uh, in just an inspiration because I'm Puerto Rican as well. So it's nice to see a Puerto Rican artist, you know, come from the streets of Puerto Rico and become, you know, very successful and to still see him be just like the the nerdy Puerto Rican guy, you know, he's still very much that guy. And so that's that's always pretty cool to see. Uh, Haley Steinfeld, love her just in general. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot, but let's go with let's go with those for for top. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. So after you name some of those artists, what are your, some of your favorite songs by those artists? <sighs> Go back to my phone. <laughs> um, well, Mitski definitely, uh, unless I'm pronouncing that wrong, I think it's Mitski or Mitsky, I don't know. Um, your Best American Girl, that's the one I'm jamming to. They used that track in um, Dickinson and it's just such a good song and I fell in love with that. Um, Haley Kiyoko, I really like her new one for the girls, where it's like, Summer's for the girls, the girls that like girls, the girls that like boys, the girls, the girls. Anyway, that's a, that's a bop. <laughs> um, love that. I also love Girls Like Girls, the OG throwback one from her. Um, I think there's another one she wrote called Sleepover. That's really good. Uh, one of my favorites. Let's see, I'm like a bop. Play it. Go to artists. Let me see. I have so many of her songs, and yet I'm not. See, it's like when when the, when people put you on the spot, you just forget everything. <laughs> <laughs> that was my problem with tests in school. It's like I knew all the info, but then the pressure of a test, I just forgot it all. Um, oh yeah, sleepover was really good. Feelings. Oh, he'll never love you. That's great. Um, there's a lot. Um. XX was a good one by Haley Kiyoko, I believe. Uh, and then Tori Kelly, I really love Should Have Been Us. That's always been like throwback jam that I go to. I also really like, uh, where'd it go? Dear No One, love that. Oh, also Ariana Grande, sorry. There's like a whole bunch of these songs that just came up in my favorites by Ari. 
Oh, Ari's in there too. <laughs> Most of her shit's just like really good. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, Bad Bunny. Uh, you know, Titi Me Pregunto, who doesn't like that one? Um, you know what it is? His songs are just good, feel good songs, like Pitbull. So I always love listening to them when I just want to like party and have a good time. <laughs> they're they're good party starters. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Haley Steinfeld. Love Myself is a good one. It's just great. Um, Capital Letters is a good one I like to listen to. It was also used in, what is it, Fifty Shades Darker or something? I never watched that one, but I I just found the song because I like Haley and uh, I guess they used it in the movie. But uh, yeah, let's go with those. I feel like I could ramble forever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What would you What would you say? Like is um your favorite part of like when you make music? What's your favorite part of the whole process? Um, probably hearing the final mix. Um, because that's like the magic. That's when it's all put together. All the different parts you sang in the booth. Um, like my friend, I actually took my friend to go with me to experience what it's like to record music uh, for these last two songs I just did. And he thought you just go in and sing the full song a couple times and that's it. And I'm like, no, like for those who don't know the process, you know, it's um, you'll usually sing like a verse multiple times and then you'll sing the chorus multiple times and then you'll sing this part. And then once you get all the bass parts of the song all the core parts you'll sing some ad libs and then you'll sing some extra stuff you'll sing some harmonies some background stuff and so it's such a long process and a very tedious specific process that i love when the mixer then takes all that you know puts it all together cleans it up and puts everything where it's supposed to be and you get to hear the final thing with the the mastered track and it's just for me that's always like the best experience because i remember i remember the first time listening to the final to the final mi mastered mixes of all my songs it's always an experience and a memory for me so like naughty it was late at night i was like literally about to go to bed i was putting my phone away and my and it went off and my, my buddy texted me he said hey i finished the, the final mix for naughty here it is if you want to check it out i was like oh my god so i like didn't go to sleep i grabbed my headphones and i put it on and just the, the just the magic and the feelings of of that everything that I got when I when I heard it for the first time it's just like ah oh, it's got it that's my favorite part for sure when it's all put together and you're just like damn that sounds good <laughs> all right so earlier when you were talking about like doing music independently and stuff you said like that's a good step for people to take so in addition to that what advice would you have for anyone looking to do more with music um yeah definitely that I, I think in today's time you can definitely, you know, put yourself out there and be successful on your own. And what I mean by that, like, obviously you can have a team and help and stuff. But <clears throat> I remember when I first got into the industry and first started learning about it, they made it sound like, you know, you need a record label. And back in the day, that was the deal. I mean, you know, when music really started becoming a thing uh, just a couple decades ago, that was the way to go. You signed with a record label and they made you who they wanted you to be. Um, nowadays, I would say that is still the way to go if you want to be at like Beyonce level, Ariana level, but those are very different levels and that's a very, very specific place. I feel like people, artists can be happier um, and will feel happier and more accomplished and just more at peace and not so stressed out when they're writing for themselves and for who ends up following them and genuinely enjoys their music. Because when you get involved with the label, they own you. You sign into a contract and you're basically their puppet. It's like actually pretty shitty if you ask me because you can't do things without their approval. You, they dress you, they tell you where you go, what you, what you do, what m music you come out with, what you don't. And so I think there's just more freedom in doing it yourself. And I think social media today definitely grants platforms for artists to become successful on their own and to grow their own brand and, and to grow a name for themselves that is theirs and, and is authentically them and they don't have to answer to anybody. Now, you can, you know, hopefully build it to a point where then you get noticed by maybe music artists, I mean, uh, music managers and, and agencies and stuff who can then grow you even more. Um, 
but I think there's just a real benefit to to really doing doing it yourself, you know, because I I feel like you won't get lost at, um, or or used, so to speak, when when it's just you and your creativity, and I <clears throat> and I feel like the artist will enjoy it more uh, when when it's just them being them and and making what they want to make, and I feel like no matter what it is you're into or what it is you put out people will find you you will find people who enjoy your content um the people will come it's just you know just the just the process of it and and it may take longer that way but i i just personally feel like it's worth it um because then it's yours i i know my process with naughty took longer than it did working with the other people but i feel way more proud about naughty and i was in a way happier place and not stressed out or anything and i didn't have to answer to anybody um and i just it's just a, a much higher accomplishment in my opinion but that's just me <laughs> <laughs> all right i got one more for you here are there any projects you plan to do or looking forward to do in the future for music uh yeah i mean <laughs> whenever more songs just like pop up in my head or i feel like writing music i'm always looking forward to making more music just for the fun of it um and yeah so i mean i'm, I'm definitely excited for these next two to come out uh i would like to make videos for them i feel like the sugar and spice one i'm gonna have to wait for just because the ideas i have for it would take like a big budget and a lot more of a of a crew to accomplish because since it's about sirens i kind of want the music video to be about sirens and that's gonna take a lot more than just you know shooting for a day in a studio um but the 143 song i would like to make a video for that i just have like a fun idea for that one and i think i, I could get that done hopefully for either this year or next year but um so far just excited for those two songs i do have other song ideas i don't have enough written where it's like you know full songs just yet but you know, my uh, my poor heart has been through a lot and I have a lot of uh, content I can always go back to to write new music to. So, um, yeah, just kind of looking forward to those two for sure this year. And then uh, whatever videos I can create would also be next that I'm looking forward to. All right. So we also have a couple questions from our viewers that they wanted to ask you. Oh, no way. Sweet. <laughs> All right. So the first question that we have is what is your favorite anime theme or cartoon theme? Ooh, um, so theme. I also realized my chair wasn't on that whole time. Um, <laughs> like what, like, I wonder what they mean by that. Like, I have a favorite anime show, but theme. Ooh, that was my neck. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know about theme. I will say, like, my favorite anime show is, like, Death Note. I thought that was really cool. Um, I don't know if... I, I know there's, like, beef and dilemma or, like, debate about whether Avatar and Legend of Korra, if they count as animes, because even though the style is very much anime, it's still an American show. If they count, I love those. <laughs> um, <laughs> if they don't count, let's go with Death Note. Um, just because I like animes that have really intricate stories like Death Note did and how every episode kind of just like had you at the edge of your seat and it was always a cliffhanger and it was always what's gonna happen next who's gonna get caught what's gonna ha like what's gonna go down who's gonna be next um so I guess it's like angsty but also fun and if there's you know some kind of magic involved whether it's you know bending like Avatar or if it's like this you know uh, magical notebook that you know like death note or uh i also really liked um uh, promise neverland that one was really good blew my mind with its first episode the way it ended i was like what <laughs> um so yeah maybe anything like that that's got good action angst but also maybe some magic involved like a little bit of fantasy uh what cartoon soundtrack do you think is like one of like the best ever Oh, that's harder than the other questions. <laughs> uh, I mean, look. If we're going to take it back, Kim Possible. 
that is still my ringtone. Like when someone texts me, <laughs> it's the beep, 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 beep. so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna throw it back. I'm not even gonna. I know this is gonna hurt for any like Owl House and Amphibia fans and everybody <laughs> in like the current time. But listen, the Kim Possible "Call Me, Beat Me If You Want to Reach Me" song was a bop back in the day. Like that shit still hits. That's I'm one gonna of the say best. that, and also Danny Phantom. Anybody remember the Danny Phantom theme song? Mm -hmm. Dude, yeah. I remember I was in fifth grade. I remember lunch specifically. Like I remember this specific day. We were challenging each other to see who knew the whole Danny Phantom theme song by heart. And whoever did, <laughs> we would like win like the chocolate milk of the other person or like win the, the gushers or something. And I nailed it. Like I knew that whole thing. Like, yo, Danny Phantom, he was just 14 when his parents built a very strange machine. It was designed to view a world unseen. He's gonna get them all. Catch them all because you know it's like Phantom. <laughs> yeah, like it was such a awesome. bop. So you know what? I want to say those two because those two will like forever be just like jams, always. <laughs> like it'll play out. It's like on piano, like a piano roll, and it's going to play the okay. theme song, and then it's going to have a timer so you can guess which one it is. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Oh my God. Please, ADHD, don't fail me now. Come on. <laughs> now I'm nervous. Oh my god, it sounds familiar, but <laughs> Shit, I'm not gonna get this one. Nah, I don't know this one, but it sounds familiar. I feel like maybe it's something I've heard, but ah, see, I never watched Infinity Train, but it sounded familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one was oh, a really yeah, fun one, one to put on piano. <laughs> Hell yeah, I know that one. <laughs> By the way, this is not possible to play. <laughs> it looks hard. Ah, it keeps lagging. I can't hear it clearly, but I'm getting it. I get enough of it. Oh, uh, Steven Universe. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I will say, whenever we do the quizzes, we always put two what I call curveballs, and they're like usually really obscure. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't think I know this one, but it also keeps cutting out. I can't really hear it clearly. Ah, uh, see, never seen Teen Titans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amphibia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, gravity one. fall, gravity <laughs> falls. That's what it is. I'm like, I know that. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I know that. I knew the last one. How did I not remember that was gravity fall? Ugh. I'm too confident. Oh, 
Damn, man, you're killing the piano. <laughs> That's an AI, actually. That's an AI. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the old software ah, we used to use. Oh, no shit. That's cool. what it is. I'm oh, like, yeah. I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> I know this one too. I don't know what it is, but I know it. Scooby Doo, damn it! <laughs> It's like, a, it's like I sing it, knowing the melody. I will say, this is one of the curveballs. I don't even remember myself. <laughs> <laughs> watched this one in school once. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like my old memory is definitely like reacting to these, but it's not, it's so blurry that I can't specify which it is. Watching them when I was a kid too. See if you had like Danny Phantom or Kim Possible. Or <laughs> this one I'll be honest. The show aired for do... like <laughs> it aired for like one year on Nickelodeon. Yeah, then it got canceled. Ah, really? Yeah. Ah, yeah. Never saw this. Get as many as I thought I would. <laughs> Bummer. Oh, I see Kim Possible on that one. You want to try the second one? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do one more. All Come right, on. Right, right, I, right. I, I got one more in me. Let's do this. I got to redeem myself. Let's see. short one too. Really short. Yeah. yeah. I'm so disappointed in myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I watch Kick Up Past 
Body. Oh, SpongeBob. Yeah. Yeah. Finally, God, I got one. <laughs> it's been ages. You have a surprising number of people not get SpongeBob. Really? Yeah. So yeah. Sound familiar though. That was a total guess. Two of those things. <laughs> creepy. What was a creepy show you used to watch? Courage of Cowardly Dog? <laughs> Of course, everyone knows that.
That's why it sounded familiar. Didn't watch enough of that though. These are fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes! I was like, this is an old one. Yeah, I grew up on this one. <laughs> oh, these are so fun. Yep. That one I didn't know. Yeah, it's Nick Jr., baby. <laughs> Another it's old one. Yeah, it is. What? Yes! <laughs> And we got an exclusive performance right there. <laughs> I was gonna say, if I didn't get that one, I would have just like just just given up. <laughs> Those were so freaking fun! Oh my gosh! Thank you for including these. This was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I loved that. I'm disappointed that I did not have better knowledge, but you know what? It's okay. It's okay. I mean, you still did pretty good. Yeah, I did yeah. okay. I did okay. As, as long as I got my KP one, I'm happy. Right, so this was a lot of fun. Yeah, 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 it was. That was a lot of fun. I, I'm glad you guys included the quiz thing. That was like, that was a good time. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. That's cool. So that's an AI that does that? Yeah, so it's mm -hmm. like, it was an old software called Concert Creator AI. And so oh. we would put the like piano MIDI file that we wrote into it. Yeah, and it would auto generate it. the hands playing the notes. Mm -hmm. So cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that was like a thing. I thought those were your hands. <laughs> oh, that was so cool. Well, thank you guys so much. This was a lot of fun. I appreciate you guys uh, having me on here. Let me know when uh, when you put this one up. Bye. <laughs> Bye.